UFC coming out of FF. They've definitely, without a doubt, got a tightly knit squad. You know, they remind me like of the Chicago Bulls. It's like everyone on on their squad has got a talent or a skill that they're bringing to the table. We the men with the staff. Everywhere we go, you've seen it. You see it in the books, in the mags. You see all that shit. I went to Berlin. Everybody's writing like TQ. He went all over the place, and everywhere he went, they're all writing like Sess. I mean, you know, that goes to tell you something, man. You know, kids know where the style is at. The FX crew, artists that are um, like old friends that just got together and formed uh, like a big um, movement, you know? And now we have people from Germany all over, um, Puerto Rico, all over the world. The thing about New York is, it always has a certain attraction coming back. It's like the atmosphere, it's like the knowledge, you know? Everything started around the corner here. And still doing something like a train here is still one of the top aims German writers have. They come over just for doing that, just one train, probably one wall, but that's like the dream of their life, being here and doing it. Newman, he's definitely one of the most motivated, never tired individuals I've ever met. Can you believe it? Coke doing a production with FX after like two years, ooh, with the infamous Lumen. Graffiti, especially like more the graffiti art we're doing is something that really keep, keeps you alive. I mean, you're doing something which is a very positive thing. It brings people together, shows them also a direction to go. I mean, that's not something you waste your life. If I wasn't writing graffiti, I'll tell you straight up, I'd either be, I'd be selling drugs, either probably be in and out of jail, or probably be killed by now. Where I came from, man, this is all we had, man, you know? I didn't have them, them, them G.I. Joes and good toys and all that shit everybody else grew up with. I had to steal my spray paint, man, and go scribble on a fucking wall, man. It's tough to make it from, from the ghetto, from down there at the bottom, man. You know, I've been shot, I've been stabbed, I, I suffered drug addiction, all kind of shit, you know? And through my art, I made it, man. I don't have any other hobbies. Graph is my life. It's what I do. I meet people from overseas with it. Uh, it matters to me the way the walls come out. I coordinate this and coordinate that and get down with Seth, Snow, T-Kid, and a few other people. We got Scene Painting here with us today. He's one of the guys I definitely looked up to. I used to wake up in the morning, look out the window and shit, and I used to see, like, different names, man. The, the Man 550, A1, Tracy 168, Phase 2. That was a long time ago, man. And I said, man, I want to do that, man. You know, I want to put my name on a train. I mean, I remember one time I pulled out a burner, right? I pulled, I pulled it out in the 137th Street layup, uh, on the one train between 137 and 145th. And people looked at my shit roll into the station, and they started clapping when that train came in. A whole car that I did, you know, top to bottom style shit, man. I wanted to get up and tell people, yo, man, I did that, but couldn't do that, you know what I'm saying? Because I would have got busted or whatever. But that was a good feeling, man, you know what I'm saying? One day. I was coming from the Bronx and we had a lot of fun and I was on the train. I was coming home by myself this time and I was taking the four train into the last stop. When I got off the train, I remember the conductor saying, this is the last stop, everybody off. And I got off the train, the doors closed and I started walking and just something like, yo, turn around. I turned around and looked and it was like this whole car, man, with Butch and Case. I was like, this shit is it. You know, growing up in New York, you know, you couldn't help but see, you know, the writing on the walls and the trains running all the time, and you wondered, you know, who, who the hell was doing that there. When you started to see it was people you went to school with, people around the neighborhood and stuff like that, and they were into it, and they were somebody in it. You know, you begin to learn and, and take advantage of what you had around you. And being an artist, you know, I kind of lended myself to that. My boy brought a black book over my house, and that was it. He showed me one piece that an older writer from around my way had done. And that was it. That shit just stuck with me, you could say. You know, I'm still doing it now. Like 10, 11 years later. Graph used to take every minute of my life. When I was writing Graph, I'll tell you, when I was writing Graph, I doodled and scribbled on anything and everything while I was on the phone. When I was in school, all I did was practice graph. Uh, on the way to school, all I did was look at graph. It was the bomb back in the day to just bomb and have your name all over the place and be known and be spoken about. I was always doing paintings. I was always painting and doing art and stuff. And uh, a, lot, a lot of people I know, graffiti writers, come to art through graffiti as far as doing paintings and stuff like that. I was doing paintings, I was doing drawings and everything. 
Then I went into graffiti because I thought it was really cool. I just, uh, I wondered, you know, who was doing that? Why was it there? There was no point of reference. There was no such thing as writers that I heard of back then, you know? No magazines, nothing like that. It was just you had to go out there and find out who, who these people were, what they were doing, what, what it was all about. And just the mystery and the freedom of it all attracted me. Like when I, when I was younger, you know, it, it was really hard for me to make friends, you know, and, um, you know, I found that through graffiti, I was meeting everybody, and the better you got, the more people you met, and people just started to look up to you, you know, and I guess that's a, that's a major reason why I'm still going today, is because, you know, I, I like the fact that a lot of people look up to me, I, I'm like a role model, you know? You know, I love graffiti, man, I, I ain't gonna front, I ain't gonna say, you know, it's, it's something for kids and stuff like that, I'm a grown man, I'm 35 years old. To me, graffiti, man, is, is, is an art form. It's an expression. It's an expression of who you are. And graffiti is an expression of oneself, man. So until it's recognized by the whole world that it is art, you know, that, that, that's where I want to see it go. You know, that's where I want to see it go, to where, to where it's something positive, you know, where people really, you know, acknowledge it as art. It was early in the 1990s, 91, 92, that uh, Per, Sess, T-Kid, and the rest of us began painting together on a regular basis. Either as a collective group or everybody on separate missions, what have you. But I think it was Per that had the, the vision of actually forming a crew. It was probably around 1993 when we were all together at Webster Park in the schoolyard and the whole crew was there painting together. And I remember this clearly, like the pieces were like just about finished. And Pearl was like, yo, this is it. Today's the day, we gotta start a crew. Yo, Pose, what's up? What's up with a name? At the time, the radio was playing, and yo, my head was bobbing. I was like, yo, yo, that's it. FX, snapping next for some live effects because that's what the crew represents, yo. Everything we do, boom, people gonna wanna see it. They gonna break their neck to check it out. And no joke, man, I'm telling you, within a week's time, it was like FX was on the map all over New York. People was like, yo. What's up with FX? They're good. They really are good. Oh, yeah. They are good. I, I love it. I I was born in Brooklyn. And uh, I seen the beginning of it. I just think it's great. I, it really tells a story. Yeah, well, yeah, and I relate to it. Too, and yeah. I relate to it. And you just don't have to be, you know, a, uh, a street guy to, to relate to it. You know, you get a guy like Vinny that can run... Uh, 15 offices and one of the largest meat distribution companies and he relates to it if he can relate to it anybody can relate to it i think more people should should understand it and really appreciate it graffiti is an art form that's open to the people if you look at it and you see it from your heart it's something that's beautiful he puts in the feeling or the emotion of a story and you come you come out with something that says wow only you don't have to go to a gallery to see it you don't have to pay to see it. It's open to the people. It's for the people. I look at the painting of this and I see the ducks. It's, it flies in. It's, 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 it's by the artist Philip Crow. I love it. I really do, but it's very limited. When I see the graffiti painting, I see it taking me on an adventure. I, I, I start here and I, I wind up there. There's very few mediums that, that do that for me. Most mediums you fixate on and that's what you see. Graffiti art, it's like, wow, I just walked down the road. It's nothing like the trains, you know? I mean, paint on the wall is all good and stuff, you know, you get busy. But the real deal is, man, you know, the trains is like that rush, man, that adrenaline that you get, you know, from uh, not knowing if you're gonna get busted or whatever, you know? I remember when they tried putting the dogs, man, in the foreyard. They had, they, they put a fence here, a fence there, and in between they had dogs around, right? And what we used to do was we used to climb up, right, throw a board across the Constantine wire they had there, right, and just, just like this, man, like this. We used to, used to be like, yeah, and them dogs down there barking and shit. You know, and we go in and we bomb and shit, man. It's no big deal. And then, you know, there's other ways of getting in, too, like climbing over through the train, coming in through where the train comes in. You know, that's how you get into the yards and shit. If I do a wall and I do a train, I know the, the feeling is not the same. You know, you like doing a train, you got all of this the adrenaline just flowing through you. I know, like, when I come home after doing a train, I, I can't go to sleep. You know, it's like I, I'm up till the next morning and 
doing a wall, it's you know, it's nothing. You can just take your time and just that that's it, I guess. You know, it's, it's the adrenaline rush when you're doing training. A wall, it's just I me. Mean, it's nothing. Even though shit doesn't run, you're still doing it. It, it doesn't run in the city and the passengers see it it runs in magazines now if you wanted to it runs it, it's no more all city it's all world you know magazines is is the line now who's the king of the line who got the most pieces in the magazine you could say you see the transit authority and the police and the vandal squad they all understand the concept of fame you know what is really what drives a graffiti artist to go paint on a train that's why, you know, as soon as you, you paint this train here, they'll wash that shit off tonight, if not tomorrow morning. That train won't run. All you're gonna have is your pictures and your memory of that night when you did it. You, if you're lucky enough to get out of there. How dangerous is it? Very dangerous, you know. You, you, like, for instance, like if you're painting, if you're painting a train and, and um, you have to go underneath the train, you know it's parked there, but you, you, you don't know whether that train is gonna start moving or not, you know? You can just, it just takes one second for that, the train to just start moving on you and just roll right over you. You might get into some really, really, um, really deep raid to where you, you have to like go all out and try and get, get away. And you can just, not realizing it, just run into an oncoming train, you know? But sometimes you're in positions like that. If you're going to be an artist, man, don't be fooled by them drugs and shit, because drugs do stop you from doing what you really want to do, you know? I hear a lot of talk that, yeah, I smoke me a spliv, a blunt, a wooler, and I could get loose. Well, that's bullshit. You should see how clear you think and what you can come up with when your mind is straight. You know what I'm saying? Drug addiction, poverty, and hopelessness pollute the hearts and minds of our community. These almost inescapable evil forces affect our everyday lives. On this avenue, life and death walk a very thin line. And as you see this, you learn more. You say to yourself, hey, they're putting this up here for a reason, for people like me, young kids that are growing up in the ghetto, to be able to say no to drugs. You could reach a lot of young teenagers yeah. with the message you, you could train here. Yeah. Drawing, and then they can imagine with their imagination, you know, the, to choose. If you want to see messages of graffiti, look at some of the uh, handball court walls where they talk about drugs. But it's done where you actually stop and you know, you stop and you read it because it does catch your eye. It's really done beautiful. I don't live in the suburbs. I live in this urban society, and um, this is a real painful reality of life in this neighborhood. Uh, Living in the South Bronx, you know, broken family, welfare, all that shit, you know, those were my fucking options. I didn't have, you know, a trust fund for college or this or go to school and stuff like that. I didn't have shit. All I had was my graffiti, you know, and that shit pulled me through. As effects crew began to evolve, the members began to express more of their own personal life experiences through their art. You know, we do murals, man. We do a lot of rest in peace murals. You know what I'm saying? And that's just a message to the kids to let you know, yo, homeboy died, he got shot. Why did he get shot? Because of the society we live in. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yo, you know, we're trying to be positive. We're trying to let people know that it's about doing the right thing. We're trying to reach out to that individual who believes as we believe that, yo, this is our world, this is our society, let's make it a better place. You know, we try to spread the message, you know, through our art. In efforts to combat all the negativity associated with graffiti, it seems the effects crew has taken the initiative to give back to those communities plagued with violence and vandalism. Using the spray can as a vehicle for communication and allowing graffiti to be viewed in a positive light. This is there, this is like the little entrance, man. So when you come in, people know what time it is. They know that this is uh we come into the home of a writer, man. Creative people live here, no question, straight from New York. <laughs>
Pose, P-O-S-E, is the profit of self-education, you know what I'm saying? So whatever I do, a lot of times when I paint, it's just not painting for graffiti's sake. I wanna like paint, and my paintings are like, yo, I wanna give you something, man. I'm trying to give you something, man. More than just the artwork, man, to wake you up, man. I can't think of a more pure form of art than graffiti because you got artists that are in, in studios with heat, with perfect lighting, with their music playing, drinking wine, doing that shit. But when you look at graffiti, you got motherfuckers risking arrest or getting beat down or electrocuted or hit by a train or whatever have you to do their art in usually unfavorable conditions. I think a lot of people from the outside might look at it and be like, oh, that shit's easy to do. I could pick up a spray can and do it. But nah, it's a lot deeper than that, man. And it's a lot deeper than that. A lot of people underestimate the art form just due to the fact it's based on letters because it's just the alphabet, you know, like, psh, anybody could take a letter and the alphabet. I write every day letters, but it's a whole lot deeper than that. Graffiti's been preyed on by politicians as a, as a token to get themselves in office, you could say, you know, wiping out graffiti, uh, eliminating the sore, you know, uh, on society that we were considered. Most graffiti writers, man, you don't get a chance to actually hear them verbalize, but yeah, there's a lot, man. A graffiti writer's mentality is a deep mentality, man. It's a mentality that's against a lot of things that are going on in the world, you know what I mean? In Europe is like uh, a very international thing because people started traveling a lot. I mean, they wanted to see what's going on in Paris. They wanted to see what's going on in Amsterdam. And that was actually a pretty positive thing. Lots of people got together who would never ever meet in their whole life. I mean, they had something in common. People from Finland meet people now from South Africa. People from Australia go to Ireland and meet people there. It's going to be like, it's, it's pretty much a very international thing, traveling around, doing pieces there and there. We got some FX members in San Juan, Puerto Rico, wreck and ski, to be, to be exact. And uh, we decided to go out there, and we had a great time. We lost in Puerto Rico. If I gotta get lost, this is the place to get lost, man. No doubt. Land of muchachas and sunshine. So you know, we out here doing our thing. What's actually happening in Puerto Rico as far as graffiti? Presently, there's a lot of envy going on amongst artists who recently started. Uh, many of them know that I was one of the original writers who started graffiti here in San Juan. I'm one of the oldest writers because I started back in 1982. Who were some of your influences back then? I was first influenced by Phase 2, who came to Puerto Rico to do a graffiti show. Ram was also one of the other people that influenced me. What do you like about graffiti? I've always been interested in the use of colors and the fame that comes with graffiti, and getting to meet other writers from other countries, and just getting involved with painting and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? It just grabs my attention, the colors, the style, everything that comes with it. Here we see one of your pieces which has been influenced by the guys from Europe. This style is really a new and innovative style. It has a lot to do with shades and shadows and different forms of lettering. And the way it actually looks really captures my attention. I'm trying to master this style as best I can. I really like it. Sess is perfect pick up the phone. Yo, Rob, we're going to be picking up Don and Famous graffiti writers travel from all over the world. Germany, Paris, London, Spain. They make the pilgrimage to New York to paint graffiti in the city that made it famous. In Germany, how oh, it came into graffiti? Yeah. You all saw the movie uh, <clears throat> Beach Street, the watch style in 85? Yeah. That's how I got into it. So this shit expressed me so much. But I want to do the same like these guys here. My first steps into graffiti was in 89, when I saw all the walls in my hometown Hamburg. And um, yeah, I started with, with two guys, Duke and Kevin. And 
Yeah, we didn't know any other riders, but um, we bought some cans, went out at night, and yeah, and get busted. Yeah, it was in it was in '96 when uh, Diamond Hesh was coming over for their second trip. We had met him at the airport, and uh, you know we knew we were gonna do like this big project. You know what I'm saying? They like doing big productions, and they were positive thinking people. You know, so for us to collaborate on this wall, it had to be something you know positive, and everyone played a certain role in, in getting this wall done. You know, and the theme was anti-drugs. One of the things that we do when we do these anti-drug murals or when we do other murals, we, we always write some form of literature. Say, for instance, here when we did the Statue of Liberty wall holding onto the crack pipe, there's a little literature that I put together. As our city is condemned with a plague we most cannot understand, it's our children we worry about in this promising land. We struggle in this society to make ends meet while the higher authorities, the benefits they reap. Who are the big willies that affect you and me? Well, it's not my neighbor, my brother, or the man down the street. It's the people to whom taxes you know you must pay who will never put a stop to the drugs here today. You know, and the literature is basically to explain what the message of the war is. Like the Statue of Liberty is crumbling and sinking into sand dunes. It's got to do with everything collapsing behind us, and we're the only ones shackled still trying to survive. So we thought of the character, and when Don threw it up on the wall, it basically portrayed us graffiti writers with a spray paint can in our hands, being shackled down, being held down from trying to express ourselves. I learned a lot from painting with, uh, with Diamond Hatch. Those, those kids, they brought a whole new flavor to the scene. You know, I was, uh, I was just learning from them guys. You know, I'm not, I'm not even gonna sit here and lie. These kids are, are real talented, you know what I'm saying? They, they took it above and beyond the next level. This is Stein from Hamburg, Germany. I'm Lumit from Munich, Germany. We're down in the Bronx with uh, the FX crew painting a mirror. My first question towards Vine is, what draws European to New York? Well, it's basically about the flavor. Coming back to, to New York means like coming back where the roots are graffiti, coming back like where the flavor is, but also, also coming to this place to introduce a couple of new techniques, new styles we have in Europe. And that's like one of the main themes, like also we are here to cooperate with people from here, like like people from the FX group. Yeah, I can show you some some new sculptures, sculptures I did. I, I think I, I will do this one here up there because it's a little bit from from the top. We're doing the FX boxing match. This is gonna be a ring right here. We're doing our names in perspective. It's not one of my choice things to do. I like to do my shit panel style. I don't really like to do it in perspective, floating, going this way and going that way, but I'm gonna try. I've done it, I've done it before and I, I don't really care for, for it, so see what happens. But it's gonna be fat. You can see some of the characters that are coming out. The crew is, is like the ring, like how Budweiser will be sponsoring Tyson fights. Maybe we draw a few fucking chewed up ears on the ground. We'll hook it up. We happen to be one of the stronger crews, basically, because we're well rounded off. We got people in the crew that are talented in all areas. And we have strong people in the graph world, in different parts of the world, that are down with the crew. Connections are being made and bonds are being formed. I guess you can call it the calm before the storm. You see, European writers have been traveling to New York for years to do graffiti, but there was something extraordinary about the connection between Dime, Hesch, and Lumet from Germany and the entire FX crew. This is the shit we getting ready to blow up from end to end. Styles began to evolve and concepts for walls were planned with the skills of an architect. I make it a point to try to get the written consent and stuff like that. And uh, How is that done? How do you get a wall? Getting a wall consists of tracking down the property owner because presently here in New York they're cracking down on giving permission for walls. The mayor's on quality of life. They don't want graffiti. Uh, to us, this is really an art form. We would call this aerosol art. I mean, if we did this with a paintbrush, I think 
that then we would be called artists. But why are we not called artists? Because of the tool that we use to express our art form. If you have this you know, up to here, you can do some really good yeah. shit. You know what I mean? Like what you showed me with, like Don showed me with the, the squares. Do this in a square maybe up here. That's interesting, but is this, the rest of this, interesting to take up this like block along the wall? The best thing you can do is be creative, which is the positive thing about graffiti. It's not important if you if you if you are creative on a on a train or a wall. It's the, the thing is that if you are creative, then at these jobs you you often try something new. So you're you're planning a whole wall with background and uh, maybe with some characters and um, you know with shadows and the light. I usually do it more or less for the fun and for the the fact that going up to a blank wall, painting it for a while, stepping back and looking at something that wasn't there, you know, a day before. To me, that's really satisfying. But to have somebody come up from like the Midwest or some shit like that, or from Europe or from New York or from Pennsylvania or whatever, it doesn't matter. When they come up to you and they're like, yo, you know, you influenced me, now I want to do artwork, you know, that, that's, that's a good thing, you know? It's, they're not out there robbing people and, and doing stupid ass shit because there's plenty of that going on and it's, it's dumb. It's, it's better to go out there and create and, and to make a mark not only in your neighborhood or something, but on the world. If you don't agree with something, you should go and express it. I happen to find a medium that I'm really happy in and that's art. And graffiti is, is just so much a part of my life that it, it's just like, you know, it's just shows in just about everything that I do, you know? I mean, I, I'm not saying I look like a graffiti artist, I mean, who does? But the fact that it's, you know, it's in my house, it's, it's you know, it's, it's in my mind all the time, just that's, that's really where I focus a lot of my time and, and spent a lot of my life doing graffiti, you know, doing what I like to do. I'm into doing big, big things now, big production type pieces and murals with, with meaning and, and, you know, just with thought, you know, not just some ignorant stuff. But most of all, from the letters on out, from the style on out, it's, it's, it's basically the background complementing the style. That's how I look at it, because without the letters, you know, we can go to any art school and have any kid go paint a wall. That's, that's not what we're trying to do here. We're, we're coming from, from this area out, which is graffiti, history out, which is based on letters, based on style. What would you say are some of the positive things that you've been able to do with graffiti? Well, I, I started a um, magazine, which that's positive. I make some money. I pretty much live off of it now, you know. I started a mail order business, which is doing really good now. I'm trying to get into, you know, just into other things, other positive things. Yeah, we got the flashbacks on the house, you know what I'm saying? This is the magazine that's going to kick up the urban art and make things real, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people may not understand what graffiti in the ghetto actually is. My interpretation and my meaning of that, it's something that comes from within, from the person. Different people do it for different reasons. I, I basically like the recognition behind it. I like the acceptance it gave me with a certain group of guys behind it. I like the attention, you know, aside from the fame, the attention that came behind knowing how to draw people's names and putting your name all over the place. FX is, is something like the graffiti all-stars, you can say, you know. I mean, there's a lot of other people that are good out there, don't get me wrong. But being that everyone already had a prior history, that's the people that were good, that got put on, were choice people. You know, you had to have skills and you had to be painting, you had to be pretty good. And this was sort of like some of the... Uh, criteria to get down with the crew. See my rhyme move. I rock the party to my lips tap. I don't need your instrumental. I can do your off the eight track. I pull up my making a record. They say don't bother. 
got them same folks for more than grabbing five dollars. <laughs> your style's old and it mash. Hey, yo, I write so much shit. This one, the pin was up my ass. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Like a laxative word Cause I've been on the mic since been the grass had the accident Sweeping all you maggots like a dan of the broom It seems I made a hit with the mouth out uh, the living room Hell no, I don't rhyme like you Cause your style is older than the summer I hate it too Hey, hey, hey When we do artwork for people, we call it aerosol advertisement, which is a new form of advertisement, rather than to call it graffiti. Because the minute we say graffiti, everyone thinks it's going to get scribbled on, everybody thinks it's going to be vandalized, it's going to be written on, or whatever have you, and they completely negatively knock it down. It's incredible the stuff that's been getting done with spray paint. It's beyond people's imagination. No one ever thought it would, it would influence society to this extent. To this extreme, but it is. But get paid to paint, which is real cool, because that's kind of the key to life: is getting paid for what you love to do. We're uh, here at uh, Todd McFarlane's toy showroom. It's uh, in New York, and Todd McFarlane is the creator of Spawn, uh, the comic, the HBO series, the movie, and the action figures. Some of the murals here that I did were uh, to enhance the different display areas for the different action figure toy lines that he does. Uh, this is the Kiss Cycle Circus. This here is a uh, office for the showroom, and uh, it's it's really not used year round, but it's for sales reps when they have meetings out here. So we just decided to put some of the more popular characters from the comic up here just to kind of give it the spawn effect. This is Angela, the Angela character. And over on this wall is the Maldosia, Spawn's nemesis. This is Tom McFarlane's uh, classic monster recreations that he does, this is his toy line. And uh, this back here is like a castle. And as you can see, I worked together in conjunction with the artist who created the sets here. I did the backdrop to just to give it some depth. It took about a little bit over an hour to do. So how does this tie into graffiti, the work that you've done here at Spawn? Oh, uh, well, I have a friend of mine who uh, introduced me to the people from Spawn, and they took a look at the, some of the walls we had done, the FX Productions, and uh, they liked the work, and they decided to hire me to do backdrops. So uh, it's just another example of, you know, our, our positive influence that you can have coming out of out of graffiti and, and into art. Not to say that I'm ever gonna leave graffiti, but you know, uh, it's it's all about evolution. You know, even the, every artist, every person evolves. And this is just an example of that evolution from a street art form which had many stigmas attached to it, to a legitimate uh, art form used by professionals and in the industry. I live to create, you know, and fortunately, my creativity has uh, given me the opportunity to start a business for myself. I have a small manufacturing firm, and we manufacture uh, fraternity and sorority goods, from wall plaques to clocks. We sell merchandise to stores throughout the country do trade shows throughout the country and it's been very very rewarding you know I mean I'm able to take care of my family raise my children and what have you all for what I do so I'm very very satisfied my name is Mo Perkan this is my place all-in-one auto parts why do you put this type of work on the building well number one I I like the way it looks I like the artwork I think it's very detailed. I appreciate it. A lot of people appreciate it. I've had a numerous number of people stop by and take a look and see what it is and who did it. And people really are interested. And I like the attention. It's an eye catcher and people stop right away. And that's what I want. I want people to stop. They start, they start off looking at the, at the painting and the next thing you know, they come in to buy a part. There was a graffiti art show in a gallery. Did you go to it? An art gallery? Yes, I would. It's, a, it's, like, it's like any other art. 
it's different, you gotta analyze it. There's, there's, there's meaning to everything that you see, like any other artwork. And these guys, honestly, if they market themselves properly, they can go a long way. You know, there's, there's definitely a future in this. How'd you like their art gallery show in Manhattan? It's good, it's definitely good. And, uh, you know, it, it, was, uh, it was rare to see an artist painting live in front of you. You know, a lot of times, you just see the finished product on the wall, and we had a uh, Perseus and Lumet side by side, knocking out some canvases in front of the gallery, and uh, it was it was interesting to see uh, the art take form in front of me. You know, to see as they started, as they were working, and then the finished result on canvas. I wish like more people get hooked on, on like the art side on graffiti because that's really something you can make something out of it. I mean, it gives you it gives you satisfaction, it gives you reputation, it gives you everything. I mean, and I hope like lots of people here, especially from these areas, from the Bronx, since you have so much space around here and so many people who like might influence you or give you an idea how the whole thing works, I hope a lot of these kids who ra get raised around here, they really get the hook on it and, and try to do something creative. Do you like writing graffiti? Yeah. I like writing and playing around. I want Oh yeah? yeah? And I like drawing. Like so how long have you been drawing? Since I was a little kid, I just do a scribble, then my brother taught me how to draw better, mm -hmm. then he taught me how to graffiti a little Yeah. Paint your bikes. Look at that. That's our future. Get mobile. You gotta ride in style, you know? The forefathers of this art form have laid the foundation and created the blueprints for all the lettering techniques done today. Although many new artists have come on the scene with fact backgrounds, this, that, and the third, the forefathers of pioneers will always be revered as the masters of style. We're just the new kids on the block taking it to the next level. What you got happening here is things to come. See, they fucking it up for us here, man, on Earth. But we can't tag the train, so we figure we're gonna put them in space. We're gonna get busy up there, because see, you can't put no fences in space. Graffiti, everybody does graffiti. Everybody's trying to make their mark in life. The only difference is we use spray paint, and they hate us for it. As uh, the scale of murals continue to get larger, I'm sure FX is going to be a part of, you know, bringing you some of the bigger things you see in New York right now. They've taken bigger visions and brought them to walls. You know, uh, some of their designs are complex. I get feedback from some of our readers at the source, and people are blown away by some of the 3D stuff they're doing and some of the theme walls, some of the collaboration stuff they're doing. What's going on with the wall here? Conceptually, coming from the head, you know, L.A. meets New York, with some European writers and European paint, so that combination is deadly out here. What's going on with the wall, Mia? We're bringing in, like, the graph elements of the West Coast. Right here in the city of New York, you got the city building up out of the center. We got, like, homeboy shit, like, flying in from, like, Europe, kind of. And it's just like putting the whole world in a perspective, you know, like capturing this shit. You see with the wall? Uh, yeah, we, we just saw that, so. Is that a German technique you're putting on that wall? <laughs> Maybe it's. But in general, I would say technique should be for everyone. And everyone should train them and use them, actually. This is something that we give from our heart and soul to everybody else out there for free. This is like, yo, a gift that we're giving. Yo, here, check this out. This is for you. But still, we get kicked to the curb. Society wants to, like, label us as uh, villains and outlaws, you know? In essence, it's just young kids expressing themselves, man. Just expressing themselves. Smothers, ghettos, and brothers, competition. I cut through the box cutters. It's the blast from the past. You deep in their ass. K-S-O-L-O and then we up to mash.
mics I touch never get cold. I can hit with five platinum mints, cause I already struck gold. It's the diamond, climbing, rhyming, perfect time of designing. My older graph, my computer, I'm designing in the line. On the top ten men, I'm at the end yelling, they get with the hands of my shitty chin chin. On ends to win, place tracks like John Lennon and Venom. Go more than a bullet at my first weekend. Seen the source of course, headlines read, they don't call them solo for nothing. We still coming off, while he's driving the truck, mom's driving the boss. Solo did it this way, cause I'm the boss. I'm in your system. I destroy shit. That's why we call the graffiti monsters, because we destroy shit just like Godzilla destroys shit. This is what happens when you train your troopers correctly. This, this, is, this is what we call God's of destruction. Right here. In the baddest times of Munich City, they do trains there, and for, for making sure that the train is running, they cut off. Uh, the cable, the cable of the of the walkie talkies in the trains, you know, of the other trains. Only in that train that they paint, they don't cut it off, so the train has to run because the other trains are, are broken. I think it's much harder in Europe to train than in New York. Europe, you have cups uh, and all this stuff. I cannot really understand the authorities who are trying to work against it. We're only hurting ourselves, you know. If I fall off a bridge, I die, you know. I'm out here, I'm not out here like driving around drunk and shit, risking other people's life. You know, I'm right here just like doing my own thing. It's like, I've always been an artist, you know, so like this is the only way I feel like I can express my art that's like real good, you know. Okay. Like, I mean, I can express it other ways, which I am later on, but right now this is like just a fun way of expressing it in another form. What are some of the risks? involved with doing this graffiti thing out here in California, out here in LA. The biggest risk out there is like, you know, the gangbangers, you know, pretty much the cops, you don't have to worry about. You can get away from cops, you only have to worry about the ghetto bird, the helicopter, 
because once that shows up, it's pretty much over with.